really nice to be here once again. I've got my third show beginning any minute now, and this one is called Traveling Light. You see, many people think that I've had success all over the world, almost all over the world, and this show is going to let you know that in America, I have found it very, very difficult, and I still believe I haven't made it there yet. But thank goodness I made it in Holland, and I hope that you enjoy the show tonight. <laughs> continue part of a, a promotional trip which was really a matter of picking three three places because that's all the time we had which was 10 or 12 dates to go to LA go to Toronto and then come to New York and really it was a matter of telling them that I'm no hero has been released the new single is called a little in love and and then I'm coming back to do concerts I mean I do think that pe when people have been flattering enough to say that I've broken America I've, I've kept myself in trim and said that hasn't really happened yet you know Elton broke America I've only just started you know Traveling light, traveling light. I just can't wait to be with my baby. America will, will suck everything out of you that it can because it is so big. I mean, how do you... How, you see, we have 50, what, 55 million people back home in England? And uh, even that is an uh, amazing potential audience. But here it's... 250 million people, so that if you come here and you're going to do any radio, you've got to do them all, otherwise it's just a waste of time. There are like 2,000 radio stations that I've got to somehow get around in my lifetime. I don't know how you do that. And the only way you can is to get out of the hotel, get in the limo, get in the radio station, get out back into the limo, back to the hotel, back to the station. What station are we in? WNBC. WNBC, here we are. Hi. Oh, hi. Richard, hi. Buzz Brendel, hi. Oh, Buzz, nice Welcome. to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Howard, this, and that's Dave. Howard's American and Dave's awfully British. <laughs> First of all, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to identify, I want you to identify this song. Move It. Released in 1958, August the 29th. The number was Columbia DB478. <laughs> I win the $64,000 question. <laughs> Next. Come on, pretty baby, let's move it and groove it. Sounds like it should be WBBC. Yeah, shake, oh baby, shake, oh honey, don't lose it. Okay. Are you recording? The rhythm that gets into your heart is so old. Not too close, aren't you? Let me tell you, baby, it's called rock and roll. I've enjoyed rock and roll for a long, long time. I love doing it. How are you? For uh, more than 20 years, our next guest has been the top pop music personality in England. WABC. I was quite worried about Cliff in America at one point because there's this terrible thing of knowing Cliff from the early years, from the very first record on. I and a million other people like me know Cliff's background, the movies, the living dolls and the things like that. That was the era that brought Cliff to us and, and, and brought us to love him. Um, I find it very strange to think that the American market never heard that Cliff, never knew about it. Get out! Get out! She's just a devil woman. Devil. 
We've got a new guitarist, John Clark, who uh, I haven't really got to know yet. But um, it's, I now have two lead guitarists. It's not like having a second guitar, they're both first guitars as far as we can say. What can I say about Martin Jenner? He's all right if you can get him to turn his volume down, that's all I say. He's a switch your mouth, actually, basically. He's wonderful if you've got him switched off. I got a feeling you've been running around. I don't really know much about Alan Park. He's just a choir. I don't know whether you'll start talking once we get to know each other more, but there's always one member of the band that's incredibly quiet, and uh, Alan looks as though he's our quiet one. The quiet man, did you see? Well, of course, Graham Todd has played piano with me for ages. I mean, but you recognize him, he's a slim one. He's um, into whole foods. He eats um, whole chickens, whole lambs. Actually, he's got a very recognizable shape as our Toddy, and he's a fantastic keyboard player. bass is someone who played guitar for me a little while ago, Mark Griffiths. Uh, the reason why he's playing bass, well, if you heard him play guitar, you'll see why I wanted to play bass. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, then uh, on drums, of course, there's another uh, guy that's been with me for a long time, Graham Jarvis, who is, uh, well, he looks like Animal from Muppets. Actually, no, he doesn't look so much like him. He plays like him sometimes. Like, but it's, he's a, a fantastically solid drummer, really. I mean, I think that one of the, the back, one of the backbone things is the drums. Yeah, I can't imagine going on tour without David Bryce because he's the one that cracks the whip and makes everybody work. And it's difficult to give him a name. I, mean, I, I call him my manager because on the road he represents Peter Gormley, who is my business manager. But in point of fact, he's involved with it art artistically too. Oh, give a little bit more. I've got a vocal group, of course. I've had the three vocal group now since the I'm Nearly Famous album. It's very difficult to get rid of them, actually. <laughs> they just turn up, and I'm just too kind-hearted to send them away. But really, without them, I'd just simply have to get someone else. <laughs> Tony Rivers, John Perry, and Stu Calvin. I think that's enough. Uh, there are certainly two other characters. Colin Norfield, who does our sound out front. Now, it's he that really makes it sound terrific because the guys could be playing magnificent guitars or wonderful keyboards. And if the guy out front who's mixing it hasn't gone turned up the right level or got them equalized, it'll just sound awful. So I always feel that Colin is really an extension of the, of the band. Just a little, little bit more. And Bob Hillier on the lights, of course. Now, again, with lights, you definitely need also someone who uh, has a musical feel, because the lights pulse and things like that. Well, I mean, if you've got someone that can't feel a, a rhythm or a beat, then you're really in lumber. And of course, a lot of the lighting cues are right on drum beats and things like that. A little bit more. I remember people say to me, how come you've managed to stay around so long? I mean, it's hard, the answer's simple. I just surround myself with geniuses and they make me look good. Except on television, when the makeup people do that. We come now to the final award of the evening, the Daily Mirror Readers Award. With the results, will you please welcome the lovely, the ever bubbly, Eunice Dobbs. <laughs> It's a film. No, it's a play. <laughs> no, oh, oh, this is a great pleasure. In the British Rock and Pop Awards, the winner of the Daily Mirror Readers Award for an outstanding musical pop personality is Cliff Richard. Whoa. And after 21 years at the top, Cliff Richard has enjoyed a hugely successful year in 1980. He had three top ten hits and is currently in the charts with his latest single, A Little In Love, from the album I'm No Hero. Having just finished the gospel tour of the UK, Cliff is about to make his debut tour in the United States of America. Thank you. And you now? Uh, I'll kiss you as well. Come on. No, I've never been to America, so I can't imagine what sort of audience is, but it means a lot to him, and I just hope it does well. I don't 
too nervous. I'm very nervous for him. I know he's nervous. Searching for a green light. Looking for it all night. Now, I don't know how anybody gets well known in the world, but it's so huge. You can be big in Los Angeles and unknown 200 miles up the coast. It's unbelievable. If Cliff wants to break America, he has to go and live there. That's a tough market to break from England. The difficulty with this particular tour is that it's going to be seven weeks long. Now, I haven't done a tour as lengthy as that for, I don't know, 18 years. You see, I hanker after this country of ours, and after about four weeks, I'll be chomping at the bit to get back home. Oh, yeah, we're ready now. I feel that just after three or four days, we could, we could do the gig now. But by the time we get to the States, it'll almost be as though we've been on the road for a couple of weeks. The band sounds fantastic. <laughs> a lot of interest in somebody that has had this power as an artist for 22 years. People want to see what this man's all about, and I hope they do because they're going to be very surprised. A little more time, some more good music, and some more personal appearances in this country. He's going to have a large following. talk to people now about Cliff, because that's, he is my hobby, let's face it. Um, I can talk to them with, uh, without having to explain who he is and what his hits were and everything. That does get a little bit irksome at times when you have to say the same thing over and over and over again to people. But uh, if it makes fans out of them, I don't care. You know? <laughs>
star If you got it, use it Don't abuse it, give me money from an old fruit jar They keep saying to me, people, not just the agent, they say, when are you going to come out and do a real tour? And I say, what do you mean a real one? They say, well, like, you know, for a few months. Well, I mean, I shall never do that. There's no way I'm going to ever be away anyway for a few months. Six months later, I'm a hard time waiting, but that didn't last long. get around this 360 million people so that even the people that come and see me are, are still saying oh is that him so it's getting used to all that sort of thing which is uh, it's exciting in a way disappointing in some ways and frustrating in most about a month is that the show starts in 58 minutes and we haven't done our sound check yet we're lost basically what are we looking for exactly? Well, we're looking for the venue. I don't know what it's called. I don't really care. Painter's Mill. They put me on the stage and asked to do my number in a minute. <laughs> but it's it's funny to come all this way and be late. We've never been late. I'd rather be in Bradford. 
Obviously, as soon as I think it starts, as soon as you hear a reaction, because then immediately you think, "Oh, at least I know who I am and which one's me." As you go in and you start singing the songs and the reaction continues, naturally, as well as winning the audience over, they win you. I mean, they win you over, really. I could crack America if it doesn't uh, smash me up first in the process. I don't know. I really don't know. I, because so far it seems to me that the audiences that we've seen are cracked. I mean, in, in our favor. I don't know they're party at all. But 
You see, America is 250 million people. We're playing to an average of about 1,500 a night. I mean, it's peanuts. It's it's not even a, it's not even a scratch. It's a tickle. So, how I get through to all these people, I don't know. I think he's going to be the next giant pop phenomenon uh, in the United States. His, his audience ranges from 5 to 50. He's the only rock and roller other than Rick Nelson still doing it with vitality and, and honesty. He takes up the entire stage, 40 feet wide, 50 feet wide. He's an entertainer. <laughs> One of the shows so far, and from everything we've heard, both in this country and in Canada, unbelievable. Oh, I've got to let them know. Yeah, it's a bit, well, it's a bit difficult to get back down that aisle, isn't it? I mean, I'd love to go back. He gives it all it's got. <laughs> gives it everything. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. Yeah? Yeah, I work here, and I, it's the best we've had in a long time. I really liked it. Yeah. I thought it was great. Oh, it was excellent. It was the best I've ever seen. It was a... Uh, very rare thing to be a Cliff Richard fan up until Devil Woman, let's say. Um, but from now on, I'm going to have plenty of company. This is the last frontier. This is it, and he's cracking it now. He's he's doing a fine job. Take care. Hey, hey, great. Good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. See you. <laughs> oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I think he's fresh, even though he's been doing this for a long time. He's a he's a fresh kind of artist or image to this country. <laughs> There's nobody like him, which is something very special. <laughs> Well, that's tall. Hey, I'm so yeah. sorry. Oh. I know. But listen, this is this is good. This grill. <laughs> people, people always kind of like to pick up on something good. Something extra. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Thank you. No, no bother. You're nice great. Nice to talk with you. Bye. 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 Okay. Okay. I've had many times. I can tell you. Times when innocence I trade for company And children I saw me crying I thought I'd had my share of that But these missing nights Are the longest Midnight diamonds Stuck my heaven Southward burning Like the jewels that I Outplaced And the warm winds That embraced me Just as surely Kissed your face It was just a matter of time I kept saying to him you should come over He said no I'm waiting I'm waiting to have a couple of hit records And it happened So I think you will be a big success. Well, I think
think New York's important because, I mean, when you think of musical cities, I mean, there's no doubt that New York, certainly from our side of the Atlantic, New York and Los Angeles are the ones that spring to mind as being music centers. And so therefore, for that reason, um, New York's important. I mean, and it's a monstrous catchment area too. It was the only place that he hadn't really conquered, and it's really, a lot of it is due because he, he didn't want to spend the time here until he had hit records under his belt. I mean, obviously, if, if the band and I don't do it, if we don't do it right, then, I mean, there'll, there'll be no reaction at all, and we'll deserve what, whatever cat calls and boos we get. But uh, we've had three weeks on the road, so I feel fairly confident that at least we know what we're going to do. We're going to do what we do as best we can do it, and then that's up to them. Are the I, I felt last night as though I had butterflies going in my stomach. At the moment, I just feel, I just feel that it's late and I'd like to go to the bar. So, but I don't feel particularly nervous, other than I might be late. So I'm going to the bar.
Yes, you gave us what we need. 